All right, so we have started the recording. Good afternoon, folks. Again, this is a recording. This is not, in fact, a stream, so there will be no comments. Um, but I did say that I would do this dungeon when I got to it in Final Fantasy, and I'm finally getting around to doing it. So, quick notes. Last we left off, we were in Twine, and there was a drunk dude whose wife died in these mines looking for a sage stone to fix the golem and all that jazz. Um, so... We helped the miner, who's around there, find ore in here. Funnily enough, he was helping us try to find the thing we needed to fix the, uh, the giant robot. And he was talking about how it was very rare, and that if you summon certain monsters through smoke bombs, they can sometimes give you flakes and scraps. So, basically, he tried to underplay the fact that it's super rare and hard to find, and then just, oh god, you're never going to find it. And then, lo and behold, convenient plot device chimed in. We kill a couple of these enemies. Suddenly, we get, not only do we get a giant chunk of the stone we need, which is perfect for what we need it for, by the way. Um, the wife who died in the mines looking for the stone, we actually found the stone she was looking for. She actually carved a message into it. And then apparently these little uh, uh, monsters stole the stone and fled. But now we've killed them and taken it back. So it actually has a message for the drunk guy. Um, Minfilia got all sorts of sad because of, you know, the whole thing about uh, us trying to find... She, she was struggling to cope with connecting with Minfilia. The fact that, Min yeah, I know, Minfilia meeting Minfilia, a little weird. Uh, annoying that they both have the same name. But... Uh, she, she was talking about, you know, trying to get the powers of the Oracle, and then by doing so, she would... She was afraid she would lose who she was and become more like the Oracle Minfilia. Um, so, Oriander was talking to her about how, you know, he was the one that led Minfilia down her path, and, you know, she chose the path that he pointed her in, but at, it was subsequently her decision, basically. And that smaller Minfilia had to do the same thing, where she had to find her path. She had to choose her path. Um, Emmett Selk, the evil dude, popped over into the crystal to talk to the Exarch and mentioned that the Exarch doesn't sleep at all. And uh, he might be an Asian, but the Exarch told him to F off because he's a guardian of the so on and so forth. Um, he's a guardian of such and such. Uh, of the crystal tower and as such he's not in fact evil and you're like okay also i'm gonna put a cue in because it's probably gonna take a while thought so um we fixed the golem as i said with the giant crystal drunk dude got sad because his wife died to try to fix that so he was pissed off at the golem but subsequently he, he decided that you know her passing it, it's better to you know try to try to help her Try, try to go with what he knew she would want, which is to fix that golem. Because, again, we're trying to fix the trolley to get us through a specific fucking rail. Which, also, the golem is apparently the only thing that can activate the rail. Because, convenient plot device, um, we have to get the fucking golem fixed in order to be able to do anything. And then we subsequently have to... It, it, it was kind of annoying. Where it's like, you have to fix the golem in order to do anything. It's like... But it's just a button. Literally, the golem steps on a button. That is it. That is all we fucking do. The golem steps on a button and we get through a gate. Which, by the way... Um... Not what I wanted. I wanted to show you guys the map. Because you might notice the map has been filled out more. So, basically, we searched the mines for a stone. We did that. And then we have to go through... To the south. Um... Oh, god damn it. Perfect placement for that box. Anyway... So you can see where Amarang is. We went south and uh, encountered some shit going on over there. But uh, basically that's all that was. was The mines are to the left, those caves. That's where we found the stone and then we pushed south. When, um, when we did push south though, we ran into our buddy Ranji, the Yulmorian general. Um, we had to fucking fight him as Thoncrid. Which I really hate. Um... And then also, like, as soon as we get through the gate, we go through a little cave, which you can see is on the map right there at the south. Uh, as soon as we got out of it, 
Yet Ron Sheets just standing on the tracks, and then just roundhouse kicks the trolley off the track. So that thing that you just spent like three hours walking around talking to people and then getting the stupid fucking thing to fix, yeah, all of that was now rendered nearly useless by the fact that you've gone through one gate and now the trolley's gone. So it has served its purpose. It's just destroyed. Uh, then you have to fight Ranji as Thoncrid, which again, he you only have like four or five skills. So super easy, super dumb. It, it I hate those fights. Don't get me wrong, Ron Cheat looked badass. Like, the animations and shit were cool, but all of it's just platforming with, like, three attacks. So they've just simplified your class down to, here's this one little thing, go do this. It's kind of annoying. Uh, Echo showed us Menphilia, the Oracle, using four of the five Warriors of Darkness to stop the tide. She actually had to sacrifice them, which was a little bit crazy. Uh, I'm gonna put new here, because I am new here, and then I'm gonna pop grit. Oh, nope, that turned off grit. There's grit. I may be new to this dungeon, but I know how to tank. Alright, I'm gonna turn down the game audio on my end a bit. That should not affect you guys. There we go. Just just to make sure it's not blaring into my ear. Um, so, yeah, Menphilia the Oracle was stemming the tide of the fucking the light to make sure people didn't die. Um, that all went pretty well. Until, uh... Like I said, she, she consumed four of the five. Which, by the way, if y'all remember the side quest, the class-specific quest, or role-specific quest, I should say, where you hunt down the people who were, like, the, um, the tank dude who wants to kill the guy with the sword and shield. Yeah, he's, um, one of the Guardian Warriors of Darkness, and he's one of the ones being consumed. I guess they're evil now, like, now they're Sin Eaters, because their soul was used to... I don't know. Long story short, Manfile used four out of five souls to stop the Flood of Light, and, uh, Adbert, our ghosty companion, is the fifth soul that was not used. Also, my health. Holy shit. Calm down, folks. Um, let's see, what else happened? Oh, yeah. Um, so, we got separated from everyone, like I said. Uh, Ariandra decided he was going to report back to Alpha Node and Alice, and then, uh, what's his name? Uh, Thoncrid stopped to fight Ron Cheap. And nearly died, but of course doesn't die because convenient plot device. And then uh, we we went back to if y'all remember a long time ago, there was a cutscene where Menphilia spoke with Menphilia, or I should say Menphilia took over Menphilia so that Menphilia can speak to Thoncrid through Menphilia. Yes, that sentence was specifically designed to be confusing. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Basically, we went back to that exact location, and Menphilia spoke with Menphilia about how Menphilia needs to choose what Menphilia wants to do with her life, which is what Oriango said, uh, and um, also decided that uh, she, she, because again, what Oriango said, where she has to choose her own path. What ended up happening was, is Menphilia gave younger Menphilia her identity back. Because it is said that, you know, when the Oracle is reborn, she will have um, bright blonde hair and bright blue eyes, and that is just guaranteed. The child is literally born with those traits. That is because of the Oracle of Heidelin taking over her body in some capacity or another. And what ended up happening there was, Menphilia felt bad, so she gave the younger Menphilia her identity back. Like, her natural hair color, her natural eye color. And subsequently, uh, also, we renamed her. So, now there is Menphilia, the Oracle, and the other girl's name is now Reen. R-Y-N-E. And her hair is now orangish red. I guess strawberry blonde would be a good term. Um, so, j just for story progression-wise, that was about the only big thing that happened. Ron Sheets back, which wasn't a fucking surprise. I had to fight him a Stoncrid, and I hated it, which wasn't a fucking surprise because it's just a case of hey you know how you're playing this class and you put all this time and effort into like leveling yourself up and getting gear and, and fuck all that noise go play as the character we tell you to now i understand from a game design perspective 
from a game design standpoint, it's easier to balance the combat and the gameplay when you know what the player is capable of. So by strictly limiting your abilities and your DPS, they know exactly what you're capable of doing. And as a result, can very easily um, design the combat around your combat potential to make sure the fight's not too hard or too easy. So, in other words, basically when you're in those fights, you have to dodge because the fight is designed that you have to dodge. If you don't dodge, you will be annihilated, and that's about it. So it's it's a lot of just dodging and using the one or two attacks they give you and then continuing with your life. Um, also, every time you do those fights, you always have some sort of healing um, skill as well. So it's even less of a threat that you're going to die, because if you do fuck up and get hit every now and again, you could, you could just heal it back. Who the fuck cares? Um... So, it, it was just all around uh, underwhelming. Pro I think it took me like three and a half to four hours. Alright, next time I use this set, I have to use my shield. And it just... Like I said before, the story, very underwhelming and annoying to me. And, a, like, just very often. Annoys the piss out of me. And, so, yeah. I'm not too like freaking out that's why I've decided I'm gonna stop live streaming this game and instead just wait and do it like this in a recording to where I can show you guys whatever dungeon I unlocked but other than that I th th there, there's really nothing that was missed we're gonna pop that skill followed by these all right as I popped my good skill whatever I'm going to AoE to attract attention. Just like that. Stone Flail. I'm going to fucking guard that one. Because I know that does a lot of damage. Bitch. Yeah, give me that free shield. Um, And, and you've, you've now caught up. I have in... 12 minutes recap the past four hours of gameplay a lot of it is run around and talk to person or run around and kill five to seven of a thing yeah now you're gonna do the jump attack well rip the red mage Did I accidentally pop that shield? I did. Whoops. I know that they're going to come after the healer, and I'm immediately going to pull them off. I have to block that. Stone flail. More like stone. Get the fuck out my face. Make sure the boss is aimed away from people, though I don't think he has any conal attacks I need to worry about. And I think we should have to do this one more time. I'm going to hold off on using my super because he's probably going to use... Yeah, he does this. Then he'll do the spin attack. Yep. I'm just going to move away from that. To get his flail back. And then he'll use flail smash. And then I move in. And then I can use this attack. So I think this is how we're going to do Final Fantasy from now on because a lot of it's going to be just, hey, you get to do like one or two cool things followed by a whole mess of not fun. A whole lot of running around and talking to people. And honestly, I don't, like Johnny hasn't talked to me in like fucking a month because of our disagreements on the storyline. I probably popped that too late. Yep, I did. That, that, that's on me. That was poor timing. I didn't realize he was using Rock Foil, which is dumb because he does so constantly in, in the exact same order as last time. So it was on me to catch on to that, but I was lost in thought. There's a lot of dodging and a lot of poking. He's going to spin, knock me away. I'm just going to stay over here. Pretty sure the fucking Red Mage is going to die again. Goodbye, Red Mage. I don't know why you keep dying. 
I know for a fact the Red Mage has mobility moves. You could very easily pull yourself back in and save yourself, but you just suck. Um, also, the uh, the last thing of the story is that when Minfilia gave Reen her identity and was like, here, you don't have to be the blonde hair, blue eyed fucking oracle. You can, you're still the oracle. It's just a case of you are your own person. Um, that being said, yeah. Oh, hello. Still waiting on that red mage. Um, she also gave her the powers of the oracle, which actually allows Reen to find and locate, uh, what are they called? The, the, the fucking wardens of light, the light warden dudes that we're hunting, so... The final boss of this place is a Light Warden, that's why we're in this dungeon in the first place. And we'll be done with this place when we're done here. And honestly, it's just, it's a chill game otherwise. Just doing this, it's like, I right, fucking, I've done how many dungeons? I don't care. Alright, cool, that one you self-destruct, it just means the well. Most shouldn't do you. Nani? Uh, I'm gonna have to put my phone on vibrate if I'm gonna be recording. Two seconds. Uh, not that button, that button. There we go, phone's on vibrate. Thankfully I can do that very quickly. Also, uh, I did a pre-recording before I did this recording, just to adjust audio levels, so I think we should be good on that front. We should sound a lot better. I should sound good, the game shouldn't be too fucking loud. Jump. AoE. Also, the Royal Cupbearer over there is exactly what the, um, our big robot friend was. Which, like I said, we spent like two hours fixing him, and then Ranji was like, oh hey, roundhouse. And we're done. All of your hard work has now just gone out the fucking window. I mean, technically, I, was, I guess kind of not really, because we did, in fact, get where we wanted to go. So it's not out the window, but it still feels fucking annoying when you put a lot of time and effort into trying to fix something, and then they're like, by the way, we're just gonna destroy that soon after, so don't even get invested, which I've, I'm, I've stopped doing. I'm basically going to treat this like um, Breath of the Wilds. I'm only going to give a shit about the cutscenes with dialogue. If there's voice acting, I'll, I'll, I'll actually give a shit. If there's no voice acting, I really could not fucking care less. Because 9 times out of 10, it's just like, hey, we need you to go fix this because this reason. Which is just giving you context as to why you're doing a thing. But in all honesty, it's all fucking busy work to give you more XP. So, I don't care. Like, I, I have played multiple characters to maximum level in World of Warcraft. There is no story to that fucking game. At least, I didn't see any. A lot of it was, I need you to kill some wolves because they're destroying my farm, or they're eating my fucking chickens, or, you know, whatever. Some, some poorly contrived reason as to basically keep playing the game. More leveling, more experience, keep playing the game. It's basic MMO design. You don't really need to worry about giving the players a reason to do a thing. Chances are they're going to explore the game, they're going to play the game, they're going to do the thing. You don't really need to give them a huge 18-page essay as to why, and Final Fantasy did not get the memo there, because Final Fantasy just starts going off on a tangent about fucking Emmett Selk and this guy and that guy's doing that thing, and, and this guy I think is doing this thing, and this guy's evil, and this guy's good. And it, just point me at something to hit, and I'll hit it. Alright, if it's got a red health bar, it's an enemy, and I'm gonna hit it with a fucking sword. Let's just end. I'm not asking for 18 contextual clues as to why I need to hit it. I'm not asking for the moral dilemma or the fucking geopolitical issues between this country and the next. I just want something to fucking hit. But that's on me, because I understand that there are people out there that will enjoy things like story. And, I mean, I do enjoy story when there's actual fucking story. But, 9 times out of 10, the story, quote-unquote, in this game is someone's evil and you're good, go. I'm just gonna preemptively Blackest Knight this. Yup, 
that was a good idea. Because I knew it was going to smack me. Oh, crap. I'm just going to get out of that. Alright, so his drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens. Good to know. And then water somewhere. Okay, the water persists. Got to keep be mindful of that. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. You're going to... Yup. I was just going to say, you're going to do exactly what the other Light Warden did. He's going to just keep on spinning. So I just got to spin with you. Cool. Stand over here. Alright, so pretty easy. Uh, I don't know why the fuck he's covered in buckets. A little concerned by that. Also, if I properly use my shield, I can just absorb a decent amount of... Uh, just keep my shield up forever. Because he does that like every fucking 30 seconds. I cannot uh, e-face that one. Holy balls. And I'm dead. <laughs> Res, you think? Don't tell me I'm spawning in the red. I am spawning in the fucking orange. Great. Like, I literally couldn't do anything about that. I was like, oh man, Blackest Night's on cooldown. I can't do anything. Like, I can do it again, too. Watch. He's gonna do it again to me. Blackest Night. Problem is, is he's going to Blackest Night me immediately. Oh, never mind. He was dead. He is, he's not gonna E-Face me. He's gonna E-Face. Ooh. Whatever. Back to the beginning, I guess. <sighs> what the fuck is that dumb hitbox? Um, I don't know. The hitbox? We need to not get hit. Also, there's a storm outside, so if I randomly just disappear and the recording ends, it's because I lost power and this will become a two-episode thing. Our manatee is locked in. These are great names. Let's see what's the finish line. Cool spear though. I actually really like this armor set. Like, like not using any glamour at all, just letting my armor just be. Looks really cool. Oh shit. A tanking ring? Uh, need. Hell yeah. I don't. What? What? Oh, it's not technically in my inventory because my fucking armory chest is full of fucking rings. As always, sort. Turn inventory because we're a piece of shit. So many level 60 rings. I, I really do need to get rid of them. And just be like, hey, if you're not something that I'm directly equipping, I'm fucking done with you. Anyway. I'll sort my inventory later. But if I place an armory chest and then hit equip. There we go. I kind of like how some falls will kill you, and conveniently there are other falls that do zero damage. For no, actually, no, no good reason. They just do. Alright, well, let's begin. Hopefully everyone's in on it. Alright, y'all gonna be dumb? Alright, I'm just gonna black this night now. Say fuck Ephes. Hey, thank you for the free buff, bitch. Oh, I chose a poor time to use that skill.
High pressure will always knock you back, so you don't want to get knocked into the water. And then just don't stand in front of them. And he does what, one rotation? Yeah, one rotation. N not that big a deal. I, I didn't actually need to buff there. That's fine. I don't think that's gonna block in time. No, I have. That's a little fucked up because I actually have the Blackest Knight buff on myself before that went off. That was stupid. He's gonna do that and then immediately follow it up with high pressure. So you want to stand out one of the four that won't knock you into a fucking thing of water. He's Bucket Bot. I'm just going to call him that. I find that name funny. Fuck you, I'm going to absorb that one. I can't, so I'll just buff. And now you're going to use full bore, or well bore, whatever. High pressure to knock us back. Blackest Knight, I did it again. I popped fucking Edge of Shadow without re fucking realizing that I popped Blackest Knight, so I don't need to. Anyway, he's dead. Not offending, not offending. It has to be fending gear or I can't equip it, so there's no point in me need rolling. Well, I actually can't need rolling. I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say the big one is probably gonna be the bigger threat. I try to lean away from my microphone when I do that. Because I know it's a disgusting noise that some people are just horribly disgusted by. But at the same time, I like breathing through my nose. I would greatly appreciate some actual healing. Thank you, ES, for being goddamn useful. Know why I'm leaving chests unhit. Also, we've hit the area where we're finding Sin Eaters now. 
Oh. I'm gonna use rebuild. I wonder if I can interrupt that. Chances are we do not want both of them rebuilding. Nope, fully resisted both. Alright, so that one has to. So, I don't think you can kill both. That's fine. You're probably going to fully heal if I have to wager. No, you're not. Alright, well that makes you exceptionally easy to kill. You probably hit like a fucking truck, though. I'm going to just do that because I know what they're going to do. I just want everyone to focus fire on this one so that we can uh, annihilate as quickly as possible. Fucking die. I'm going to pop that so that when they get up, they're both getting hit. And then I'm going to stand here in AoE. Just to make sure that I get aggro on everything. I do not want to get hit with that shit. These guys are actually very weak. I don't know why. The fact that they had like a huge charge up to get up made me think that they were a threat. They are really not that challenging. Also, fucking rogue daggers. Oh shit, earrings for tank. Need. And equipped. Because I will always do that. Also, we're at the final boss. Cool. So what's this, Light Warden? Oh. Hey, it's Yamask from fucking... Named Storch. No, I'm going to call it Yamask. Because it reminds me of Yamask. From Pokemon. And if you know what Yamask is... Awesome. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. More specifically, it's evolved form is my favorite Pokemon, but you gotta appreciate the steps it took to get there, you know? Well. Wow. This is terrifying. Alright, the light warden theme. I like that. Alright, well, fuck it. In we go. Alright, you'll almost always open with a tank buster, so I'm gonna use that once. Almost every boss I have fought opens with a goddamn tank buster. So I'm just gonna fucking blackest snipe that. Take zero damage, and then immediately get a buff. And this is what I mean by it's like, oh no, it's so dangerous. It's really not. That was easy to predict. Mostly because I've seen that attack animation on other enemies, and it's always in its square pattern, so you just gotta be mindful. Uh, breaking wheel. Alright, I either need to get very close or very far. We'll find out. Alright, very close. And now you should use that fucking annoying attack to probably tear through my ass again. Oh no, now you're gonna do your AoE mechanic. Crystal nail. Cross pattern. Breaking wheel. Shit. And then we're probably going to have to hide behind these. I'm just going to wager that guess. Oh, shit. Okay, now comes positionals. Got it. I like this boss. This boss is active. Uh, we can't possibly be in both. I think it's just a case that someone has to be in each one. I don't know how true that is. Also, I'm going to black this knight because this is probably going to hurt. Or not. Or I'll be under it and not take any damage at all. So I wasted that. And now you're going to hit me with your annoying attack. Why are you targeting fucking Nana over there? Oh, you're, you were doing another animation. I was completely not paying attention. Alright. Well, I'm going to black this knight this. Thanks for that. Free buff. Hey, look at that. Free buff. Blackest Knight, you inconsistent little shit. So, like, I have blocked that crank skill before. That gives me the buff. 
Alright, now we're just gonna get hit with it again. I'm gonna shield. I do like the music I play during these boss fights, though. Shit's fun. Crystal now. Followed by Heretic's Fork. I just stand diagonally and I'm safe. And then Censure, which activates all the wings. Alright, Heretic's Fork. Ow. I will not get hit with that twice. No, it's better to stand here. That's cool. There's that one. And then here's this one. Alright. So, kind of fucked up the positioning on that one. And now I have vulnerability. That's no bueno. I thought I was going to die this up, pop the living dead. I, I literally only have one healing ability, so... And that's this third soul leader skill I have. And now you're probably going to use the third technique. Technique! Every time I say technique, I think of a fucking Spongebob meme. Alright, so Breaking Wheel. We already know that one. And then Censure, which will activate the other ones. And then they'll activate Breaking Wheel. So we just have to make sure we position ourselves. Alright, so you fire off. Alright, well you're making this easy on us, thank you. You fire off. You fire off. And then you fire off. I do like that after he does this, he just stands there like an idiot. And then he gets back to poking me. Intestinal crank. Honestly, sounds like something a doctor would use. Just one of those, like, oh shit, you've got a blockage in your lower intestines. We're going to have to use the intestinal crank. Also, bam. First try. Technically. No. Oh, hey, wristband of fending. Anything that says fending, tank automatically. So this light warden down for this area. And that will restore night to the sky, which it is conveniently always night whenever we kill a light warden. Let's not question that logic at all. Also, every time we kill a light warden, we absorb the energy, and it is... I guess as Ishtola said, we're not dissipating this energy. We're not, absorb it, it, we're not absorbing it harmlessly. It's doing something. I don't know what. I think I might do one stream for this game, one or two more streams, but it'll be after we defeat the Light Warden in the final area, because by the time we defeat the Light Warden in the final area, we will be good to, uh, ooh, yeah, see, it's not, not doing too good. After we defeat the Light Warden in the final area, I'm imagining the story's gonna kinda come to a closure on that one, so we'll wait and do that on stream, because it's more than likely when they start doing the cool shit and they're like hey do like four cool things back to back because this is like the climax end of it also everyone has left so all that gear is mine awesome hey i got a helmet and a when did i get a helmet whatever you can't see it also uh as i said minfilia is now reen with orangish hair and still blue eyes i think but, you can see her hair is different. I love that. Thank goodness we succeeded. Y'all motherfuckers didn't do shit. 
All right, so we're going to do this. We're going to do the cutscene after this, and then I'm going to end the recording. Because after that, you fucking guessed it. They're probably going to tell me to go to the last area that I haven't defeated a Light Warden in. What a surprise. And then I'm going to have to <gasps> find it and kill it. And there's going to be some arbitrary bullshit in my way that I'm going to have to spend an hour and a half to two hours doing side questy bullshit to get past. Because MMO design. Because the point of the matter is... I'm glad those travelers made it all the way to Nabatha Rank. But when Urianje told me the Talos was in pieces and the trolley didn't look much better, I couldn't help wondering what in the hells had gone on. Also, the cat dude on the right is the drunk. At least the heart is in one piece. The rest is replaceable. Looking at this mess, though, it's a miracle they survived. Again, Ranji kicked the shit out of the robot and the trolley. Uh, what the, are you seeing this? Again, conveniently nighttime every time we kill a boss. The sky. It's. Full of small exploding balls of gas. I was gonna say, isn't that the kid from the village not too far away that uh, Alice was in who just didn't know what to do? Yeah, that's right. And then the woman died trying to save him, and then we had to kill her in the first dungeon. Rip that woman. F's in chat. If I had chat going, this is a recording, not a stream. Why are we so... And now suddenly it's nighttime. Apparently it took us 12 hours to get out of that goddamn temple. At last. Night has returned to Amarang. Alice, you need to get your fucking eyes checked. That sky is blue. That is day. It is day. We'll save this broken world yet, Tesleen. Oh man, Tesleen, the woman who died. Vol 3 is pissed. Understandable. Wait for retreating in the wake of the warden's demise. Mm-hmm. Back to Calusia, the last refuge of light. I was just gonna say, chances are if they're smart, which apparently they're the most powerful military in this land, so I hope they are, they're going to shore their defenses on the last light warden. Who will no doubt do everything in his power to thwart us. Unless Vol 3 is the last light one. Well for defeat there would spell the end for both him and his heavenly host. There the fate of this star shall be decided. Small thing, small criticism. It would have been a lot cooler if stance wise. They all had one leg higher than the other because we're on an incline. If they were like all leaning into the incline and looking heroic, it would have been a lot cooler than us standing straight, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense considering we're on an incline. We should be leaning backwards if we're standing straight up. I saw a lot of feet floating on the ground there. That's all I'm saying. So many goddamn rings. So many goddamn rings. So many goddamn rings. Guess what we're doing? It's, we're just gonna return all level 60 rings to inventory, and then I'll shove them onto a uh, what are they called? There we go. That'll just sort the rings. I'll, I'll put them on a retainer later, and then put an armory chest, even though I'm not gonna equip it for a while, because that's for another class. Rin seems troubled by the sight of you. Well, considering she can see light.
Anywho. We're gonna go to the Exarch. We're gonna report it. Also, Ishtola has just had her suspicions confirmed that we are, in fact, absorbing the lights from the Light Warden and not dissipating them, so we are in some sort of... We're, we're endangering ourselves in some manner or another. Alright, come on. This looks like I can totally climb it if I go up here. Aha. Uh -huh. This has solved nothing. I've been smackledorfed. Anyway. We're going to end this recording. So thanks, Dr th thanks, folks, for joining me. And uh, I'm not going to do a full outro, because this isn't a stream with a proper outro. This is just a recording. So see you in the next episode, when I subsequently get to another dungeon and summarize some crap that we encounter along the way. So, see you later, folks.